Right, um, I thought, thought I'd do a, do a version of this, a, a meadow. Uh, this is the one I did some weeks ago in acrylic. Uh, it's a, a sky tutorial as much as anything. I can't do that in watercolour, but in the sort of time that I allow myself. But I'll wet the paper all over. It's Fabriano, £130 weight. I had a great joy this morning listening to, for English or British listeners, on Radio 4 this morning, a program between 9 and 10 o'clock, it featured a very old dear friend of ours, I'm proud to say, Helen Clare. Helen, uh, I've known Helen through a, 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 an operatic society I belonged to some years ago, and I've been very good friends with her daughter and son-in-law. And Helen used to sing with the BBC Concert Orchestra through the war, the 30s, 40s, workers' playtime, sung with big orchestras. She's 98, nearly 99 now, and she can't sing because she, she lost her singing voice with a bad cough several years ago. Deaf as a post, but fantastically bright. And we're really, we hope we're all around when she's 100. And, uh, she was contemporary with Vera Lynn, Petula Clark, or Petula Clark was a young girl then, uh, and she's uh, still in contact with Helen. And it was a, just a joy to listen to this gorgeous interview. It was edited, of course, because Helen is stone deaf now, and they couldn't even hear the, hear the playback on the radio. I've been in touch with the daughter this morning after the, the presentation, but if you, I hope you, some of you will, will have probably listened to it. And uh, it was nice to know. It's an awful name dropping, I know, but uh, we, we live in reflected glory of, uh, of the great Helen Clare because she was a great star in her day. And the BBC are making a fuss off her these days. And she was on Songs of Praise a few weeks ago, <laughs> but you only see, or we only see the the edited highlights of it. But wonderful nonetheless that this this uh, knowledgearian is it. Uh, the over 90s and the 90s is being appreciated again in her life, which is wonderful. So I'll raise a glass to her later on. We go to her parties in her lovely care home where she, she lives, in her, her own flat, it's her place. And she has, well, she did up to the year before last Christmas, have parties in the common area, in this lovely big area. And she would hold court. Hold court is the best way I can describe it. Anyway, what are we going to do? There's this meadow. So I'll, a bit, bit of sienna, a bit of raw sienna. Just, just a bit all over, just to warm it up. And we'll have a, what sort of sky should we have? Well, we'll do a bit, bit of a bright sky today, so it's a nice day today. So a bit of blue, a bit of alizarin. The alizarin just takes a sting out of the, the brilliance of the of the uh, ultramarine. It gives it a bit of dark as well. So, so with watercolour, we have to leave the the light areas as cloud, and that that will do. Just just. Put a bit of a, a bit of a lizard down the bottom there. Just straight in. Now yesterday I did a, a painting and, and I used a bit of acrylic. It was a line and wash and I'd used some acrylic after it, over it, and I'm going to do the same on this. But I, I'm going to just dry it off now before it I'm quite happy with that. Um, can you just put your hands over your ears? So here we go. I don't want to uh, use the hake for this. I'm going to use my number 14 brush to so put in some of the trees. So mix up a distancy sort of grey colour. 
colour for the background. Uh, right, let's start there. Vary the colours. We'll go up here, I think, a little bit on this one. We can put some sienna, Payne's grey, or ultramarine. And I need some water. So let's just come up here. I'll block it there so that it doesn't look as if it's falling off the edge of the paper. That's an easy way just to show the, the trees. We can put some calligraphy in, in these afterwards. I love trees. Love them in winter. Right, we'll, we'll put a, a larger tree in here, just a, just a block. That can come down here a little bit. Get some dark in there. Embellish this afterwards. Uh, I'll need some darker bits, darker notes in there, so perhaps the other ultramarine. Don't want everything looking the same. And behind that, I can just put some blue, some bit, 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 bit of ultramarine. Just give it a little bit of distance. And warmer colours. Right, okay, so we'll uh, put it in the meadow now, but nice bit of yellow, bit of blue. Bit of... Gonna have to vary the colours in this. See, it just holds a lot of a lot of water. So keep that margin, I don't want too much uh, bleeding there. And we'll a bit of sienna. I need to uh, re-clip the paper. And I want to get some nice greens, greens in my grass because I want it to contrast with the wildflowers. I'm going to put shadow in. in that it's just between a hake I mean a, a synthetic mix and <coughs> and a pure sable and this is the Kalinsky sable brush all right okay we'll let, we'll let that dry a bit what's that look like on the screen yeah that's all right um, I, I'm going to do a bit of, uh, well, it's still a bit, a bit damp for the calligraphy up in there, but we can, we'll try. Here's the rigger, a bit of dark, blue and sienna. Just connect up with that impression.
by both slopes, picking some slows for all the, uh, the slow gin lovers. It was a good year for slows. Okay, just a brilliant bit of detail on it. Bit of texture. Riggers are wonderful for this sort of stuff. Not just a little bit of shadow in the in between the grass. Careful that you don't hit the wet spots when you don't want to hit the wet spots like that. I'm going to dry that off, so it, it, it plugs again. <coughs> now you'll notice I, I don't use any ready mixed greens in, in watercolour. Can you make your own? But that doesn't mean so you can't use them. You can use whatever colours you want. This is just my palette. Right. Uh, we'll put in a bit of bit of uh, calligraphy now with a big brush. Just yeah, a little bit of detail that just suggests that there's a lot going on there. We hope. No, not too much of this. It's. Uh, I'm going to stipple over it anyway. I have this this number eight. I bought two of those. Uh, I think this one needs to be a little bit stronger, so I'm going to. Strengthen it up a little bit. Now I might phone Alan Owen later on because although he's not as old as Helen Clare, he probably would have, or his family would have listened to Helen Clare on the lights program. I just want to put in some, some darker bits again. This is where I'm fiddling. Yeah. Just flicking the brush up to catch the high, high spots. I don't think that tree is very good. Now, I liked it before much about it. Anyway, we'll, we'll get the acrylic now. <coughs> because oh, I've got a lot of time today. It's just a very simple meadow painting. It's uh, <coughs> yuck uh, to shoot, aka toilet roll. 
Right, so get my little stipple brush and into the red. It's not a watercolour now, it's now a mixed media. But it's just, just experimenting really and, and seeing what you can do with various things. And, and I'm desperate to do new stuff as well, find new ways to show things. Uh, it just it's probably not a good idea, but probably we're into good painting. Or painting that wasn't so bad. I won't, I'll try not to overdo it, I'm just going to put some, go back to the watercolour now. But when you had to do this, you, you can go over some of that with your acrylic if you want. Just experiment. I mean, I, I, I've got to try to make this look a bit better than average because I'm demonstrating it. But you, in, in the quietness of your painting space, you can waste as much pay, paper as you like. But I'm going to try and not to waste paper and do his demos. Uh, right, I'm going to let that go. I, 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 it, it might, it's one of those that might be good because it's, or might be acceptable because it's, because it's simple. Put a bird or two in. Okay, so let's put it in a mount and have a, have a look at it. Well, as we say in London, a butcher's hook. Have a butcher's. Butcher's hook rhymes with look. Let's have a butcher's. Well, there we are. They're a nice simple little watercolour. Not only mixed media, but mixed brushes as well. Let's... Uh, I'll move you around so you can have a, have a look at that. So just a simple meadow. I'll zoom in. Oh, let's go down to there where I'll put those poppies. I could, I suppose, um, find a little poppy brush. Just make one or two just a little bit bigger. One or two usually translates to lots. Then they stand out a bit, don't they? Well, there you are. <coughs> uh, right. Let's go, go up to the tree there, blocking that slope, slight slope from there. So how simple were those trees? I, it was made easy because of using, using well, it, that part of the brush there. Just, you've got to have some water on it, it holds, it holds quite a lot. But if it's too dry, it, it doesn't work. And it does have this lovely point to use as well. I think that's going to be a good, good brush. But I, I love the hake, I like the hake for skies and, and general purpose. But all this was done with that round. And it's so simple. Mix up your blue colours for the distance. And as you come to the foreground, of course, just start using your warmer colours. Sienna's, in my case here, a bit of red. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye bye.